having a niche is like having an identity that you associate yourself with in your coaching business. And one of the biggest struggles a lot of coaches have right off the starting point is how do I find a niche and how do I know that it is actually profitable? So today we are going to tackle this topic. How do you pick your niche and are all niches truly profitable? So let's unpack that together. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Michelle and I am a disability and marketing coach. I love helping female coaches to simplify their marketing so that they can get seen, get heard, and get paying clients and turn this passion for coaching into a profitable business. One of the biggest struggles that all the coaches have, including myself for many years, is that to find our niche. It's almost like this mystery identity that is somewhere out there and just lingering around and somehow just keep haunting us. So if this is something that you're struggling with today, we are going to tackle what is the niche and how do we make it a profitable thing that we can have in our coaching business. So let's talk about what is a niche and why is it important. First of all, the most simple way to think about this niche is think of it as a specific market that you choose to position yourself and your service into. So let's say in general, this would be a picture of where you're looking at in terms of building your authority, building your visibility. We start from the outer circle of having that general audience. If you're someone who's starting new, you might not have that general audience just yet. So you may be building your online presence. You might be on social media. You might be posting a lot. You might be doing video, dancing reels. All these activity is so that you can and build and attract a general audience. Once you have the outer circle identified and you have started building that general audience, then you want to focus and narrow it down to the target audience. This may be uh, women in the 40s or 50s or uh, teenagers who's applying for college. Some of my clients are doing a college success coach and they're focusing on the teenage year or the high schoolers. So you start to narrow it down from your general audience into a more target specific audience. Once you have this target audience, that is the market where you can carve out and these are becoming narrower, which will then become your potential paying clients. So in a nutshell, generally where I recommend all coaches start, especially if you're just starting new, is to actually build on that general audience first. You need the people who's always there to rave and back you up and celebrate every single post that you post so that it helps the algorithm to push your future content to the top of everybody so that it has more opportunity to get seen. So that is generally the step number one. So personally, my approach is when you first started out in that first couple of months, don't worry about the niche, just get out there to help everybody that you have become a certified coach and so that they can start following you. And from there, then you can narrow down to your target audience. So picking a niche is crucial because it allows you, especially on the online world, to narrow down your marketing effort. So one of the challenges that if you're building an online business is that there are so many messages and there's so much noise that's outside, right? So if you don't identify a specific niche, then your marketing messaging becomes a lot harder. Can it be done? I personally believe if there's a will, it can be done, but it just takes extra effort. So imagine if you're targeting both the women in the 40s and 50 and also the teenage year or the high schooler, then you run into the situation where you might need to have multiple content and multiple copies that you have to create in order to target and meet the specific needs and struggles that each of the audience would share. Therefore, to make things simpler, what I recommend is to pick one that is your absolutely passionate about. You can wake up in the morning and you are very enthusiastic to work with this particular population and group. And that would help 
in terms of your marketing effort. So your messaging would be congruent, your、uh, target would be more focused, and you don't have to worry about whether or not this message is going to land with the high schooler or vice versa. So that is essentially, in a nutshell, in the most simple way that I can explain what is a niche and why is it important for you to consider once you get past that first couple of months in your coaching business. And this is a super important when it comes to building an online. Coaching business. Now, if you're someone who's just focusing on in person and you would like to just serve your local community, this some of this may not apply because when you go out to a networking event or you meet potential clients outside of of social media world, you might be able to tailor your message. Based on the person that you're meeting at that moment of time, but if you want to transition and expand your reach, you want to leverage your social media, then you really, really need to consider narrowing down your niche so that your messaging would be a lot more focused. All right, so are all niches profitable? And the answer is no. Not all niches are created equal. Some are more saturated, whereas others are more untapped. There's a lot of business coaches. There's a lot of life coaches. You might feel that the market can become very saturated. You go out, everybody is a life coach, and so how do you actually position yourself to be the expert among all these life coaches that's out there? And how do you actually get traction into your coaching business? So not all niches are created equal, and some are very saturated, and other are completely untapped. Now, there's good thing about being in the saturated. A、uh, niche market because when there's a demand, there's supply. So it, it's a hit. It's a sign that if you are choosing something that's saturated, it's actually a good sign that there's actually a market out there that's demanding such a supply, and therefore the supply become bigger because the demand is higher. So you have more supply. So just because something is saturated doesn't mean that it's bad, and it doesn't mean that it's good. It all depends on how you. Position your expertise within that saturated market, so that you can stand out with your expertise and the area where you can help. So, exactly how do we pick your niche? I have broken it down into basically three steps, but the most important step, and I cover this. Tremendously, a lot inside my profitable coach formula, and this is probably one of the most important module in module number one. Is where I sit down with all my students to help them to identify their brand identity and also your value proposition. What value proposition means that you have this passion and you have a specific skills that you can use within your coaching niche. So, if we were to look at this diagram. The niche, how you find the overlapping area, is from understanding what you're passionate about and match it with the skills that you have. So let's say you used to work in an administrative office and you're really great with organization, and these are the skills that just come easy for you, and these are the things that makes you really productive. You are all into getting things done, and you have somehow a magical way of organizing all your spreadsheets, all your productivity tools, all these things that just come super easy for you. And when you overlap it to the passion that you have with coaching, for example, somehow you just love helping others to stay organized or to stay productive. And so now you have an overlapping、uh, area where it could very well be your potential niche, where you help females. Oh, I'm gonna continue to use that example that I started. So you could potentially helping females in their 40s and 50s to be more productive because you know how to get things done. And so you start to see the overlapping area of the passion and the skills that you have, which allows you to identify the niche. That you might be able to tap into, and that would also make you a profitable、uh, coach within that niche market. Now, the other step in order to find that niche is once you understand your passion and you have a skill to match it. What you want to do is to go out there and do a little bit of market research. You want to look at the demand and supply that we had talked about earlier. Is there a demand for productivity coach? If so. Who are other productivity coach who have done this before? And so you wanted to get a sense of what is out there in the market and what are other coaches offering, so that you can bring it back to your desk, your office, to think about 
what makes you different? What is your approach that makes you stand out that no one else is probably out there offering this? It could be your personality. It could be the way that you work with your client. It could be the way that you conduct your session. Don't underestimate your ability to coach someone with your own unique style and approach. So just because we use the same skills and skill set as a coach doesn't mean that our approach is the same. My approach might be a little more action oriented. Someone else may be all mindset and thinking about overcoming the imposter syndrome. And so both strategies and both approaches word. It's just based on how your clients and what their learning style is. So just because someone else is doing the same thing, don't underestimate your own values and what you can bring to the table for your clients. So first, you identify your passion and skill. Second is you do the market research to see if there's actually a demand for this niche for you. And once you go through that second step, then you wanted to look at are there any other coaches who's offering the same thing? If so, then what is it that they're doing differently than you? And that is worth highlighting, especially when it comes to your marketing messaging. Now, with all these three steps, I can share a pro tip with you. Now, ChatGPT, if you have not started using it, you should, because it's the greatest tool that has saved you so much time tons of time in order to conduct this time-consuming market research. In the past, I have to go to multiple different websites and looking at all these different coaches and what they are offering. But with ChatGPT, it actually saved a lot of these market research time. So just comment down below ChatGPT if you want me to do a video showing you how to do and streamline this market research so that you can save some time. All right, so finally, let's talk about are all niches profitable? Once you identify your niche, once you know who you want to serve, the next question is, are all niches profitable? And so it's a big question to answer. And the short answer is potentially yes. All niches are profitable, but it depends on three factors. Number one is you need to have the right people. Remember that first diagram that we had talked about? You need the general audience, then you need to narrow down to the target audience, and potentially the next inner la layer is your potential client. If you don't have the right audience, then if your niche, no matter what you choose, it's not going to be profitable right? That's just common sense. You need an audience that is engaging and they're really vested in terms of all the other things that you're putting out there. These are your raving fans who would just come and rave you and they want to support you no matter what you're offering. So you need the right people in order to make this niche profitable. You also need to have the right offer, right? You have the service, you have the offer, but if your service is not addressing a real problem that your target audience is having, then it would be very difficult and challenging to move them into your potential client inner circle. So you need to have the right offer. Your, your, your coaching offer needs to solve a problem that would be fulfilling the needs of your target audience so that they can become your potential client. Now with the right people, with the right offer, what essentially you are going to need is the fundamental, the right message. Your marketing should be clearly communicating the benefit of your service that needs to resonate with your target audience. So it almost looks like this. You, you need to have the messaging that's clarified, that's clear in order to describe the offer that you have, which will then move to people because of the offer and the benefit and the transformation that you have to guide them through the next level so that they can become your coaching clients. So essentially, in order to make your niche profitable, what you need are three things. You need to have the right people, you need to have the right offer, and you need to have the right messaging to share with them at the right time, at the right moment, at the right point of their life journey in order for them to say, yes, this is for me, definitely sign me up, I want to work with you. So these are the three things that you want to consider, especially if you want to make your niche profitable. Each niche has its potential to be profitable if the elements are aligned. A lot of coaches find that they have the people, they have the offer, but somehow the messaging is just kind of off. So it doesn't resonate or they don't know how to articulate it. So when your people, your target audience come across your
your offer, they're kind of clueless and confused in terms of exactly what's in it for me. And therefore, they're unlikely to sign up or click and buy. So you wanted to make sure all three are aligned in order for this niche to be profitable, that is aligned with your true value and also your brand identity as a coach. Now, this week, I am giving away three-step exercise to help you to perfect your I help statement. This is probably the beginning point of how you make your message resonate and being able to articulate the value that you bring to the table for your audience. And it is probably the first step that a lot of coaches get stuck. So I am giving you away a three-step exercise this week. You can grab the download using the link in the description box and you can get some clarity in terms of what is your I help statement. And I know this is true for so many of my clients, including myself. I have spent so many times changing and revising. And when you don't find that I help statement, it almost feels like you don't have this identity and you're in this identity crisis as a coach. So in order to help you address that, I share a exercise that you can do. You're welcome to grab it and the link is in the description box. All right, let's wrap it up. Choosing the right niche, it's not just about following the money, right? It's not just about looking at where I can make the most. It's about aligning your skills and your passion with the market that value your expertise. So when you look at your passion and your skill that you can bring to your table, then the money and the profit, it's going to come as a result, as a consequences of it. So take your time, do your research and comment down below chat GPT. If you want me to do a video on how to narrow down and streamline and shorten the time that you spend in your market research. I'm happy to do a video for you on that. But in the meantime, choosing your niche is something that takes time. It's always going to evolve and don't be afraid to test things out. One of the things I encourage all my students do is once you go through that three-step exercise, which has the link down below this um, description box, once you go through that three-step exercise, what you want to do is you want to take this I help statement out and you want to give it a try, give it a shot and say a couple of times to make sure that it actually roll off your tongue easily before you consider changing it again. And I know this is almost a, a benefit, but it's also a curse where we as coaches, we tend to go back and change it so many times just because something is off. If that is how you feel, I also have a complimentary strategy call that you can book and I'm happy to brainstorm your I help statement with you. All you have to do is just grab the link down in the description box below and I'm happy to do that uh, strategy call with you. All right. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay updated with all my upcoming videos. And if you have any question about finding your niche, I'm happy to share my strategy with you in terms of how did I find it and how I help other coaches finding theirs. Drop in the comment down below. I love to hear from you. And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.